So an engineer at a company that you've done plenty of work for over the years comes by with a drawing. You help them make revisions, point out problems in it, update the drawing, and then they turn around and they send it overseas instead of to your shop. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving back into the Practical Machinist forms to cover a scenario that a user just found themselves in. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are going to be tackling a situation that I think a lot of us have found ourselves in over the years. And at the end of the day, if you're going to be running a machining business or involved in the operation of one, it's one that you are likely going to encounter yourself in as well. As always, before we really get into this, I just want to point out that as machinists and manufacturing professionals, it seems like a lot of these kind of scenarios involve engineers. And right off the hop, I want to say, Engineers and purchasing agents, although we may cover a lot of scenarios that involve them, they are not the enemy and I want to make sure that we are not demonizing them. It's the fact that as machining professionals, a lot of our primary points of contact are going to be these individuals. And, you know, because of that, a lot of the interpersonal issues that are going to pop up and business issues that pop up are going to involve these people just because it's the people you are dealing with the most frequently. It's the people that can make or break your business by giving you work or not. So that's kind of why we end up talking about these scenarios. But if engineers did not exist at a lot of these companies, none of us would have any work to do. It's about developing ways to work together. So right off the hop, I just wanted to point that out because sometimes I feel like it's, uh, it's a little bashy and that's not what I'm going for. So anyways, any, all of that said, let's dive into the issue at hand. A poster came on to the Practical Machinist Shop Ownership and Management Subform, and they had a bit of scenario on their hands. He'd been doing work for this big company, it sounded like for quite a while. I believe this guy owned the shop, so this is someone who you know has full control of what work they do and the customers they have. And it sounds like this customer has been there for a while. And for whatever reason, this big company has hired two brand new engineers. They were described as new, so new to the company, and new to engineering. So I'm imagining they're probably fairly fresh out of school. This is not a transplant of a guy who's been working for 20 years. So what happened is he had these two engineers come by his place and they needed some help. And as we've mentioned before, this can actually be a very good scenario. Um, I've talked about before how some of the companies I work with tend to hire fresh out of school grads when it comes to engineering. And this can be a good thing because if they're willing to listen and they're willing to learn, you can really develop a good relationship with them. You know, if they're willing to take feedback to make things more manufacturable, if they're willing to take feedback to make the parts better and make your life easier, they can get parts for cheaper. You can have less headaches manufacturing parts. It's a win-win when it works out. But to go back to the poster, these two engineers came by different times, but the first engineer came by and he had a drawing that the shop owner wanted to, or he wanted the shop owner to look at. And from the way it was described, this guy who was posting, who owns the shop, he had done very similar work to what this engineer wanted before. And for whatever reason, the part as drawn, he had had to make modifications to it before. So it's some kind of part that has, it sounds like an O-ring uh, with some other little feature. So this guy who owns the shop went and talked to the engineer and said, hey, listen, on this drawing, we need to change X, Y, and Z, because if you build it as is, it's going to leak. And if you build it as is, you're gonna need to leak test every single one for whatever reason. I, I don't know the specifics. If you build it this way, it performs better. You don't need to leak test it. Again, I don't know why it would need it one way or the other. The other thing he said is when you get these, you need to make sure you actually order this special tool that we designed for it because if you seat the O-ring traditionally, you're gonna crush it, you're gonna shred it. You need this special O-ring seating tool that we make in order to get that down in there and make sure it functions correctly. The engineer sounded really happy with it. They said, hey, do you know what? This is great. 
made the changes, approved them, and said, I'm gonna be sending you a PO for five of these parts. Just wait and you'll be seeing it. So the guy said, great, this is awesome. You know, <laughs> I've done this work before. I know they're a good customer, here we go. In the meantime, the second engineer came by for another drawing. Again, second new engineer. There was some kind of flange it sounded like and it had, again, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen the drawing so I'm talking off the way it was described so I apologize if I'm vague, but apparently there was a flange or a, a lip on this flange that was super thin and he could tell it was gonna be very difficult and for the function of the part was going to be prone to breaking. So the person who, uh, the guy who was quoting out this work for the engineer looked at it and he said, hey, listen, what's going on with this? And also there's no material call out here. What kind of material do you want it made out of? And what do you want us to do with this? And at this point, this second engineer says, oh, actually I have this part quoted out as is from an offshore company. And the guy says, well, what material are you gonna make? Or are they gonna use to make it? And they said, Bakelite. And for whatever reason, this guy knowing the properties of aluminum versus Bakelite and whatever application this is going into knows Bakelite is going to be a problem. First of all, he said, you're not gonna be able to get the features you need on that accurately. Second of all, it's gonna break. It's not gonna work. So he said, hey, do you know what? I would change it to aluminum. I would also, he actually said he went and so he had the drawing. He said, leave it with me. He actually redrew part of the drawing to make it so the flange could pop in and out. You know, he made some quality of life adjustments to this part that would make everybody's life easier, including his own and said, here, this is what I would do. It's gonna have the same function, but then if this lip breaks, you can pop it out. Um, it's aluminum, so on and so forth. He made some modifications. He put some time into this. And the engineer, the second engineer said, hey, do you know what? This looks great. I'm gonna approve it. Um, again, I'm gonna get you a PO. So a couple of days go by and the shop owner calls to follow up and says, hey, listen, I, you know, I'm ordering some material or whatever it is. Do you want me to order material for this job to these two engineers? And both of them said, actually, we got those already sent out. That offshore company that quoted the one, we're getting both made there. And it turned out that they were getting both these parts made with the modifications that this shop owner put in. So essentially some other company is getting the work that this guy didn't bill for and getting the benefit of his knowledge and he's getting nothing. So essentially his question was, what do I do in this kind of scenario aside from never helping anybody out ever again? Because at this point I'm being abused. Why am I helping this company out for free? I don't work for them, you know, I have my own company. The scenario is a very difficult one, but the responses from the forum members on the Practical Machinist forums were very good. I recommend checking out this, uh, this thread. And also they kind of reflected the same thought process I had, although I had a couple caveats in there, which I'll get into. But right off the bat, this is not an uncommon scenario, unfortunately. I wish this was a rare scenario where you you'll encounter this once in your career. No, if you are in a business in especially the Western world that can be offshore, although we are seeing a lot of reshoring, there's still a lot of people out there, especially new engineers or new purchase agents that will come into companies and say, I want to make my mark. I'm going to save 80% on our manufacturing by offshoring it. And that's going to be the impact I make on this company. Listen, guys, I've had one of my biggest customers a few years ago go from here to literally 90% lower in terms of order volume because a new purchasing agent or a new engineer came in and decided they were gonna offshore everything. The ramification of this is that you end up seeing a lot of it come back because if you're just doing what some of these people are doing and basing it on price and not delivery and not quality, yeah, a lot of it ends up coming back, but it's still a huge thing you're gonna have to deal with. And I've had this happen where a part that I've revised four or five times with a customer has then been pulled and sent somewhere else. They're within their rights to do it. You know, it's my fault for not protecting myself. But long story short, this is gonna happen. This is a people industry as much as we wanna say it's not. And when you're dealing with people, you have to realize you're not always dealing with people that think like you. You're not always dealing with people that have your priorities in mind. And you're dealing with people that you may not have a personal relationship that you have that you had with the last purchasing agent. <laughs> that last purchasing agent may have liked you and would you know move mountains for you. This new guy may not. And that kind of sounds like what's happening here. So that all said, what should you do if you find yourself in this scenario? 
The first thing you should do if you are encountering this kind of issue is to be upfront and direct with your expectations. If you have a customer and you constantly give them feedback on designs or manufacturability or pointing out problems and you do it for free because you know you're getting the work or you know you're getting the work, this is a very common scenario. I do it all the time. I probably do it more than I should sometimes. Um, maybe why I find myself in this scenario sometimes, but this is not uncommon to do this. It's not like you should never look at a drawing ever again and give feedback before getting money in hand. It's very common to have this kind of interaction. That said, if you're seeing them start to abuse it, the first thing you need to do is be direct. There's a term in interpersonal relationships called covert contracts. And the best way to explain a covert contract is an unspoken agreement. So I do this for you with the expectation that you're gonna do this for me, but neither of us are saying it. So I'm doing you a favor today because I want you to do me a favor later but I didn't say that. I can't get mad at you now because you didn't do the thing I didn't ask you to do. It's my fault for not communicating that. So in this kind of scenario, you need to take that covert contract or that unspoken agreement and at least make it a spoken agreement or maybe a written agreement. So, you know, we all like to think, again, I say this all the time, we think we're dealing with sane, rational thinking people the other person on the other end of this may not be thinking about you at all. <laughs> they may not be thinking about your company. They may just say, hey, Joe over at XYZ Machine knows about machining. Let's talk to him. Hey, thanks Joe for helping me out. Now I'm gonna go get this work done. They may not even be aware of the social dynamic or the expectation there, although we all think they should be. So in this scenario, the first thing I would do is I would basically talk to both these engineers and say, Hey, listen, I appreciate the chance to quote. I appreciate you bringing this by, but for future reference, the way it's typically worked between our companies and, 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 ugh, and in our industry is that if I'm giving feedback and consulting on a project, I'm doing that with the expectation that we are gonna get the work, assuming that we can agree. Or at least, you know, if you're gonna send it somewhere else, I want to have a second kick at a can. You know, if you tell me if we have this agreement that, you know, I do consulting with you, and my price is coming in here and you get it here, I at least want a second kick at the can because you know what, maybe I overquoted. Maybe I can come in here. You know what, maybe we can talk about raising volume and I can come in here, but I at least want a second kick at the can before you cut me out. And is that a comfortable conversation to have? Absolutely not. But the more uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have, the less uncomfortable situations you're gonna get in like this. And here's where I'm gonna break ranks. You know, I said I was a little bit different than a lot of the answers on the Practical Machinist form. Everybody there tended to say, at this point, you institute a consulting fee. You, right off the bat, say, you know, time spent on consulting is gonna be billed at X per hour, rounded up to the nearest half hour. So if you wanna come in my shop and you want me to look at your drawings and help you out with them, that's fine, but you're paying me for it. There's nothing wrong with that. But personally, I think in my experience, that's jumping the gun a little bit. After I had this kind of conversation with them, I would, I know they always say, you know, fool me once, blah, blah, blah. But I would, in my opinion, say, give them a chance to redeem themselves. So I would have this conversation, hey, listen, these are your expectations, and then continue the relationship as is. So the next time if they come in and I'm quoting on a part, if I don't get it, now I know it's time to institute these kind of fees. Because listen guys, like we said, these are new engineers. They may not be aware of the way the, the industry works. They may not understand social relationships. They may not, who knows, right? We can't assume a whole lot about one instance of this going wrong. Maybe I corrected that and now the next time it's gonna be great. And maybe now that turns into a 10, 15 year purchasing agreement type scenario where I'm getting a lot of work out of them because I helped them out, I built the relationship, I took the time to clarify the relationship, and now we have a good working relationship. So I think jumping the gun and saying, now you're gonna pay me for everything can come off as very abrasive. Um, you need to be abrasive at times in business, that's fine, but I would maybe hesitate before dropping the hammer on that. That said, if they do it to me again, then it's time for that agreement. So what I would do at that point is if this is just a pattern and this is how they operate, I would start quoting out the drawings as is. 
So if you want it in Bakelite, no problem. I'm going to quote it out in Bakelite, but I'm going to quote it out at $1,000 instead of $500 because that's just what you're asking for. But the caveat I would put on this, because that's what everybody said, you know, give them what they're asking for. If you see problems in a drawing, you let them make that drawing the way it is. And you know what? They can pay you again to make it the right way. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe not ethically, but you know, business wise, it, it is what it is. What I would do is I would put a sub line in the quote and I would say, you know, on top of all this, consulting fees offered, um, engineer or, well, I guess we don't have engineers here, but I would basically try to paraphrase. I see several issues with the design. I am available for a consultancy meeting with a flat fee of three hours at X per hour to go over this with the design team um, to point out manufacturability issues whatever, with an expected cost savings of 30% when it's all said and done. So maybe I see Bakelite's not gonna work. We should do it out of aluminum. I know that I can do that for about 30% cheaper. So I'm gonna offer them that opportunity to make that part cheaper and better, but I'm gonna put in there that they're gonna pay for it. At the end of the day, guys, you need to realize that, I mean, advice isn't free. When it comes to this, advice is not free. It comes from a wealth of experience that you and your guys have from years of machining, um, you know, it's it's not fair to expect anybody to not pay for that. You know, we do favors for each other, but in a business, you have to get paid. That said, I'm not in the engineering business. I am not in the consulting business. I am in the making parts business. So if it gets to the point in your business where you're basically with a customer making it clear that you're gonna let them fail, or you are going to not save them money when you can save them money, and they are resisting that, at the end of the day, guys, that relationship is not healthy and it's probably not gonna be successful. So if you find yourself this far down the road with a customer, you should be looking to replace that customer because that relationship is not gonna get better. You know, one thing I often see, especially on the forum, is people seem to have this, I don't know if this is the way it was back, you know, back in the day in the old school world, but the more fees and the harsher you are and the more money you slap on a job, the more they're gonna respect you. It doesn't matter how many times you tell them they're gonna have to pay for something or the more fees you put on there, that's not gonna make them suddenly respect you and turn that damaged business relationship into a shiny, happy new one because now you're charging them for something. At the end of the day, if you get to this scenario and this far down the road in it, you should be looking to diversify your customer base because they're probably not gonna be as good a customer if a customer at all for very long, okay? I would like to know in the comments below, guys, what your thoughts are on this. Have you had this happen? What do you do if a scenario like this happens? And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.